Let's talk about points of concurrency and the special segments within triangles that create them. First, let's talk about perpendicular bisectors, and their name pretty much tells you exactly what they are. A perpendicular bisector is a line or array or a segment that is perpendicular to one of the sides of a triangle and is also the segment bisector of that side. For example, ray DE is a segment for example, ray DE is an For example, ray DE is a perpendicular bisector of triangle ABC because DE is perpendicular to AC, that's the perpendicular part of perpendicular bisector, and it also intersects AC at its midpoint. You can see that AD and CD are marked as congruent, so D is the midpoint and ray DE is a ray that intersects AC at its midpoint. That makes it a bisector. Now the interesting thing is that if you draw all three of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, they will be concurrent. Concurrent is a fancy geometric word for they'll all intersect. Which is actually kind of unique. Not every three lines will intersect at one single point, but for perpendicular bisectors, they always do, no matter what triangle I give you. If you draw all three of the perpendicular bisectors, they'll always intersect at one specific point. And it's so special, in fact, that we give that point a special name. It's called the circumcenter. Now, just the fact that the three perpendicular bisectors intersect at one point is kind of special all on its own, but we can actually expand that even farther and notice that the distance from the circumcenter to each of the vertices of the triangle are congruent to each other. And that's not by coincidence. It's actually because if you were to inscribe that triangle in a circle, so I put triangle ABC inside of a circle, that would mean that J is the center of the circle, and that AJ, BJ, and CJ are all radii of the circle. And we know that all of the radii in a circle are the same length, so it makes sense to say that the circumcenter of a circle... So it makes sense to say that the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. Now it's important to point out that the perpendicular bisectors will look different and intersect in a different place depending on what kind of triangle you're looking at. The first triangle that we saw was an acute triangle, and in that situation the circumcenter will be inside of the triangle. However, if you look at the perpendicular bisectors of a right triangle, they actually intersect at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. On side AB, we have a midpoint of F, and if you draw a line that's perpendicular to that side, it's line FJ. Point D is the midpoint of side AC, and if you draw a point that's perpendicular, and if you draw a line that's perpendicular to that, and if you draw a line that's perpendicular to that, And if you draw a line that's perpendicular to that, you'll actually see that those two lines intersect at one point, and it happens to be on the triangle instead of inside of the triangle. Now, it's important to discuss where the circumcenter is going to be and what the perpendicular bisectors are going to look like based on different types of triangles. The first triangle that we looked at was an acute triangle. And for acute triangles, the perpendicular bisectors will always intersect inside of the triangle. Go lay down. Go on. Go lay down. However, if you look at the perpendicular bisectors on a right triangle, 
they'll actually intersect at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So the midpoint of the hypotenuse would be the circumcenter. And if you connect the perpendicular bisectors of an obtuse triangle, they'll actually intersect outside of the triangle. So the circumcenter there isn't even inside, it's like point J right here that is outside. So keep that in mind if you're ever asked to So keep that in mind if you're ever asked to draw the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. You should start by finding the midpoints. You should start by finding the midpoints and then draw a segment that's perpendicular to that side of the triangle. But keep in mind you might have to go through the triangle or you might have to go outside of the triangle in order to make all of the perpendicular bisectors intersect. Next, we'll talk about angle bisectors, and again, the name kind of tells you exactly what it is. An angle bisector is a line or array or a segment that bisects one of the angles of a triangle. For example, ray AD is an angle bisector of triangle ABC because it's marked that angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD, which means that AD cut angle BAC in half. And similar to perpendicular bisectors, if all three angle bisectors are drawn inside of a triangle, they will all intersect as well. That makes them concurrent. And their point of concurrency is called an incenter. So point G in this diagram is the incenter of triangle ABC because it's the point at which all three angle bisectors intersect. Remember that the point of concurrency for perpendicular bisectors, which is called a circumcenter, it's equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. Angle bisectors, however, which intersect at the incenter, the incenter, the incenter, on the other hand, is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Remember from earlier this year, we talked about that the shortest distance between a line and a point is a perpendicular distance, so that's why you see right angle markings on this diagram, because the shortest distance from G, which is the incenter, to side AB would be a line that is perpendicular to that side. So JG is perpendicular to AB, and it's also the same distance and also point J is the same distance from point G as H is from G and as I is from G. And that's because we can inscribe a circle in this triangle, which again would make each of those segments, JG, HG, and IG, the radii of that circle, and point G, the incenter, would be the center of the circle. Now you might be wondering why it's called the incenter, and that's because the incenter will always be inside of the triangle, unlike what we discussed with perpendicular bisectors, which might be inside, outside, or on. So that's a good little clue to remember which one is which. Incenters have to be inside. The next type of special segment that we'll talk about is an altitude. An altitude is a ray or a line or a segment that is perpendicular to one of the sides of the triangle and passes through the vertex on the opposite side of the triangle. So it's similar to what we said with a perpendicular bisector, except perpendicular bisectors had to bisect the side, and that's not true for altitudes. In fact, you can visually see that AD is not as long as DC. So altitudes are not perpendicular bisectors because they don't bisect one of the sides. Instead, the other thing that we know about an altitude, in addition to it being perpendicular, is that it has to pass through the vertex on the opposite side of the triangle. Now, just like perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors, 
If you draw all three altitudes in a triangle, they are concurrent. They'll all intersect at the same point. And that point is called the orthocenter. Orthocenters and altitudes are special because they make similar right triangles. And we haven't learned about similarity yet. So kind of just keep that in the back of your mind for right now. When we get to the similarity unit next semester, we'll talk much more about altitudes. The last thing I want to show you about altitudes, though, is that similar to perpendicular bisectors, altitudes may intersect inside, outside, or on the triangle. If it's an acute triangle, the altitudes will intersect inside. If it's a right triangle, they will intersect on the circle. The orthocenter will actually be the vertex of the right angle of the right triangle. And if it's an obtuse triangle, the altitudes will intersect outside of the triangle. So again, this is a good thing to keep in mind if you're ever asked to draw the altitudes of a triangle. You will need to draw a segment or a line that is perpendicular to one of the sides and intersects the vertex on the opposite side. But in order to make all three of them intersect, you may need to go outside of the triangle in order to make that happen. And the last segment that we'll talk about is a median. A median is a line or array or a segment that connects a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint on the opposite side. So medians are similar to perpendicular bisectors in that they intersect at the midpoint of one of the sides. However, you'll notice that it's not perpendicular to that side as well. That's the difference between a median and a me That's the difference between a median and a perpendicular bisector. They both intersect at the midpoint, but one is perpendicular and the other is not. Instead of being perpendicular, medians instead will intersect the vertex on the opposite side of the triangle. That actually makes them somewhat similar to altitudes. We saw that altitudes are perpendicular to one side of the triangle and intersect the vertex on the opposite side. So the difference between a median and an altitude is that altitudes have to be perpendicular to one of the sides, whereas medians intersect the midpoint of the opposite side. And just like the other three segments that we've examined so far today, the medians of a triangle are concurrent, meaning that if you draw all three medians of a triangle, they will always intersect at one particular point, and we call that point the centroid. And there's a couple things... Just like the other segments that we've looked at so far in this lesson, medians are also concurrent, which means that if you draw all three medians of a triangle, they'll always intersect at one particular point, and we call that point the centroid. And there's a few interesting things, and there's a couple interesting things that we know about the centroid of a triangle. One of the things that we know about the centroid is that the distance from the one of the interesting things that we know about the centroid is that the distance from a vertex of the triangle to the centroid is two-thirds the length of the entire median. In other words, if the distance from A to E was three units, then I would know that the distance from A to J is two-thirds of that, or two units. Another way to say that is that the distance from the in-center Another way to say that is that the distance from the centroid to the midpoint of that side is one-third the length of the entire median. So again, if AE is 3, then AJ is 2, and JE is 1. The other interesting thing we know about a centroid is that it's actually the center of gravity, or another way to say that is the center of mass. 
So if you were to cut this out of paper, or wood, or anything at all, and find the centroid of the triangle, you could balance that triangle perfectly on the tip of a pencil, because the centroid is the center of mass. Medians are more similar to Medians are somewhat similar to angle bisectors in that their point of concurrency will always be inside of the triangle. So whether it's an acute triangle, a right triangle, or an obtuse triangle, it doesn't matter. The centroid will always be inside of the circle. Which kind of makes sense, right? If we're saying that the centroid is the center of mass, well, it would have to be somewhere in the center of the triangle as opposed to intersecting outside. So it makes sense that it would have to be in the triangle. Wow, we just learned a lot of information. We learned the differences between perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, altitudes, and medians. And we learned that each of those segments intersect at a special point called a point of concurrency. Perpendicular bisectors intersect at the circumcenter, and the circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices. Angle bisectors intersect at the incenter, and the incenter is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. We learn that altitudes intersect at a point called the orthocenter, and altitudes make similar right triangles. And lastly, we learned that medians intersect at a point called the centroid. The centroid is two thirds the The centroid is two thirds the distance from a vertex. The distance from a vertex to a centroid is two thirds the distance of the entire median. Additionally, the centroid is the center of mass for that triangle. And that's the basics of what you need to know about points of concurrency in a triangle. In our next lesson, we'll continue talking about these points of concurrency and use them to solve problems.